Hello, can everybody hear me? Yep, I can. I can hear you. Yep. Okay, excellent. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jesse. I'm calling from uh, Saskatoon. Uh, company is Connex Wireless. And as long as everybody is ready to go, I will uh, begin my presentation here. Jesse? Yes. Uh, are going to record this and put it to our YouTube channel. Are you okay with that? I am perfectly fine with that. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, uh, sorry that you guys can't see me. My uh, webcam is uh, a little funky today, but um, I will be sharing my presentation. So you will be able to see that. Uh, okay, Donna. Um, it says that you have disabled the screen sharing option. So you're going to have to enable that in order for me to share my presentation. Donna, did you catch that? I think I got it, Jesse. See if that'll work. Okay. There we go. All right. Can everybody see a gravel operations monitoring? Yes, we can. Yep. Yes. Excellent. Um, yeah. As you can see, today we're here to talk about uh, monitoring and tracking gravel operations. Um, uh, it's a very, uh, I guess, sophisticated system, as you can see, and uh, yeah, I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, just a little bit of background of our company. Uh, we are based in Saskatoon and we, uh, yeah, we have a lot of clients across the prairies. All of these little icons are a client and um, I have provided this uh, map to Donna. It is interactive, uh, not in this presentation, but um, yeah, uh, after the presentation, if you would like to read some testimonials from some of our clients, uh, you can do that and feel free to contact uh, any of our clients about their experience with our company and our solutions. Uh, first things first, uh, do you want to talk about dollars and cents? Um, <clears throat> just getting a little bit of uh, uh, background information uh, about uh, the arm of Cornwallis uh, uh, budget and um, comparatively, uh, we want to put things into perspective. In order to operate our system, as you can see here, it's going to cost you less than half of 1% to, uh, per year to operate this system uh, in the first three years. And that drops to uh, by another 50% to 0.19% uh, in every year after that. So this is, uh, we're talking about pennies on the dollar in order to have a very robust uh monitoring system in place for your gravel operations. Yeah, uh, I'm also here with my associate Vince. Uh, he's going to jump in and uh, add some uh, context as well. I just warn you, I'm just louder and I talk more. That's probably it. But... So um, one last comment about the, the investment is that we get that, A, do you even need a system like this? And B, is this a worthwhile investment? And it is a very small percentage of your overall budgets. It's very common for any of the RMs, like the ones that you saw on the previous map. You got to justify this. And uh, so the investment was figured out over a three-year period because you had your hardware, but it drops substantially because you're just paying uh, a very small amount for the actual service associated to it. 
uh, but with a good return. So what we wanted to talk about is that what you need to get, and we provide it to you in basically two fashions. We either provide it to you in a map form and you're able to see the activities of what's going on. In your case, it would be gravel haulage. You're able to see on different maps, you're able to see an individual or the group, where they were dropped, how often, you can see a day, you can see a week, a month, or the full year. So visually, you can get a, a very good bird's eye overview of where um, all of your materials have gone throughout the year. And it is, uh, this is developed based upon the data that's provided from our system through to your system. And um, so this is a good visual way, but the next screen that we'd like to look at is now in a better fashion, the data comes from here. And you will either see it in the form of uh, charts and graphs, but you also see it in a spreadsheet format. And all the things you needed, you have different materials, so you're able to know what your material stacks are. You, you can know which, uh, which material has been removed, the quantities of it, how often it was done, the frequency, which vehicle took it, how far that vehicle traveled if perhaps I don't know if billings are done just by the load, but if it's done by distance as well, this gives you an absolute accurate method of every detail of every figure. Nobody's handwriting anything down. This is, uh, this is provided real time through to the servers and, uh, and you can correspond it to any other data that you've received just to have an assurance. Now the settings, the, the settings don't mean a heck of a lot uh, in the long run. We would work with you with our people and we would do these settings. The settings are, you would include the types of materials that you are interested in. You would put what your costing is, if that's what you wanted, the volumes, the type of equipment, uh, yards, uh, tons or tons, and you'd set this up. This setup here that we're, you're looking at is something that takes less than five minutes. You do it once and you're done, but it is exactly customized to uh, what your operation uh, consists of. Yeah, the, the point of this slide is um, the system is very easy to use, very user-friendly and not a lot of work to maintain. Okay, uh, this is related to the actual operator or haulage uh, operator. And inside, you'll see on the, uh, the key padded box that's there, gets installed in the vehicle. The, the operator will drive into the pit. They will get their load. And the only thing they have to do associated to your, um, your, your haulage is that they would literally punch in a two digit code for the type of material. The example here is this three quarter inch uh, gravel. And so they punch in zero two and then enter. And that forwards on to the servers and we know the type of equipment. Then the individual would put the number of, in this case, it's yards. So they punch two, five and then enter. And now all the information that's required for you to do your or system calculations are there. If at the bottom, uh, it indicates the operator notifications. If an individual uh, forgets or fails to enter the materials, as they're trying to drive out of the uh, uh, gravel pit, uh, uh, and, and a buzzer goes off and it reminds them that they forgot to enter this information and it will continue buzzing until they do enter it. So once they've entered uh, the, the corresponding quantity and type, they drive off. When they get to a dump point, what will happen is that they are supposed to do the, their dump and may that be a single or, it's, or it is a, a traveling dump. Uh, what will happen is that if the uh, the dump gate at the back isn't closed, another buzz goes off to remind them that they have to uh, close close that. And it will uh, uh, it will stop buzzing once they've uh, con they completed that operation. So, but basically the operator's job is not a big one. It's enter in the material that's put in there and make sure the gate is closed. There's no paperwork, there's no writing down, there's no documentation, there's no room or margin for error. Or, or forgetfulness. It is uh, all automated. 
Now, what we, uh, we do suggest in your case is that you've got in your own backyard, you have an installer that, can, uh, that we've dealt with in the past uh, quite a few times to do installations. And it would be a really good option uh, for you to use this uh, company just from, uh, to, uh, to make sure that it is operating with fashion. And they correspond, they work with us to make sure that, uh, that it operates um, properly so that there's no question of, uh, of its accuracy. And, oh, sorry. So yeah, um, just a high level summary of all of the benefits. Uh, uh, yeah, the maps and reports are very easy to generate. Um, we're a Canadian owned and operated company. We're in Saskatoon. We pride ourselves on our customer service. And uh, the point of this system is to provide objective verification and transparency um, to all of the activity that's happening. So regardless of what's happening, the system will see that and you'll be able to verify uh, and determine where exactly it is your uh, budget dollars are going, so to speak. Um, yeah, uh, there's no maintenance required on the system. Uh, it's, yeah, it's installed and then it's done. And um, you can access all of the information from uh, a cell phone or a tablet or any computer in the office. Uh, and yeah, that information is uh, uh, recorded in real time. Now, and one last comment is that we have a family of a dozen different products that we've developed for rural municipalities. This particular product uh, is uh, you log in in the same fashion, may that be, uh, gravel haulage or graders or mowers or anything. So all our systems integrate into one and it's very easy to use. And I believe, I think we've done this as short as we can. Um, we'd like to leave it to you. If you could please, uh, we're open to questions. Ask us anything you'd like. Mr. Chairperson? Yep, go ahead. How much is the system gonna cost us this year installed? <clears throat> if we're talking about the, uh, uh, the the four haulage, what we're looking at is uh, just over eight thousand dollars complete, eight eighty one hundred eighty dollars to be exact, and so that that includes the hardware and service. Um, the does that, include, does that include the installing too? That does not include the installation. Um, our I guess a guesstimation on that we would have to uh, put you in touch with them, but it's going to be sub one thousand dollars for that. Uh, there's not really, you don't have, uh, in, you're fortunate that you don't really have a travel time concern. Lots of the others you saw on the map, they have a, quite a distance to go. So um, uh, we can work with you uh, with connecting, but it's, it's under $1,000. Yeah, I have a follow-up question. Now, last year you said uh, you, you did not have a number how much the installation of the systems would save the RM money on gravel provided. Is that still on or still correct? Like we're not saving any money to the system that spread it on the ground, right? We only have a better control what is where, right? I don't know what we can say. We, uh, uh, the, the, the purpose of our system was and I'm sorry, I don't want to sound like a pol politician here. That's not my intention. I'm not quite clear. To save money would mean, under normal circumstances, it would be greater efficiency, make sure the proper materials go to the proper place. None of it is, uh, uh, th there's no uh, shortages or anything like that. Um, you can see if there's, it, you're not going to be involved in it, but if you wanted to see a travel route that is less, um, Efficient. Uh, yeah, efficient than another w w with a foreman. Yes, it improves it. But in your case, your operation is is strictly uh, uh, being controlled by somebody else. This is just giving you all the data that you need to make sure it's correct at a very, at, you know, like, like Jesse had said, less than half of 1%. Yeah. So essentially, for less than half a percent of your budget, we're giving you uh, an objective uh, tool to verify all of the uh, product that you're paying for is being delivered uh, to the appropriate locations in the municipality. I still feel that we haven't answered your question the way that you'd like us to. So I, I will apologize for that. I'm not sure 
what we can't we could you know uh, we can't say oh a reduction in fuel or or or, or, or easier maintenance i don't know what we can say so I, i'm strictly talking rebel let's say ten thousand yards from the yard from the pit distributed on a different uh, streets roads whatever so we'll go there that's that's a given more or less so the only control that makes it more official in, or efficient, in your opinion, is having control which roads the uh, uh, truck went and how often he leveled the gate, pulled it up, or whatever. But he does, it does not guarantee that the gravel goes on the spot where it's supposed to be. Or we saving any money through that system as such. Okay, well, be, okay, if uh, I'm sorry, am I speaking to a counselor right now? No, speaking to Kurt yes. yes. Okay, so. But the efficiencies of uh, the, the the operation, the way it's spread, is a duty of the third-party company that you're getting to do this. So I don't understand. What we're telling you is exactly where your stuff went, when it went, how much it went, where it was dropped, and if there's any concerns and you have to do a comparison, it's there. Is there a money... Uh, I don't know what to do. You don't own the city. Like, you don't own the, the vehicle. So I don't know what to say. From, from the Ben, so I've got a follow-up question after Kurt. I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. Thank you. Ben, so I'll, I'll ask the question, but a little bit more clear for the taxpayers. The municipality has a 20,000 yard pile of gravel in a specific area. Does your system if we have 20,000 yards there, that it's GPS, we've got a scale there. If the truck drives on the scale. Right now our tender says we have to, they have to submit the weight scale. So the question I have, now you've got two verifications. The pile has been surveyed. We're gonna have way tickets. Does your system now track basically, well, let's use 25 yards just for argument's sake. Basically, 25 yards goes in that truck. Is your system robust enough to ensure accountability that those 25 yards are going onto the municipal roads and the truck goes back? Is it robust enough that the taxpayers, municipality as a whole, isn't get your change? Well, Making sure that load indeed gets dumped in our municipality. The shortest answer I have is yes. We can you you can see on your mapping or the data uh, what was picked up, how much was picked up, and you can see where it was dumped. So you can see the process. You can even you don't really care, but you can see the road that it was traveled on, the distance they went. But the answer is yes. It, it okay, is Vince, without doubt. That, I'm, I'm satisfied with that question. The next question I've got over a five six year period. Does your data from one year to the next overlay? Uh, let's say I'm just gonna pick one mile. Smith Road is one mile. Can we look at five year data to see how much gravel went on, went on Smith Road then? Absolutely. Uh, part of the reason we designed this, I'm sorry I can never give short answers. The whole idea, and we're, we're not you guys, we're, we're just in an office. But what we've learned is that if, if a municipality needs to go to the provincial government to get financial assistance, you usually have to have backups with this. So we keep the data from all of the activities. We literally keep that forever. And you can overlay it year to year so that when you go hat in hand to the government to provide a, a report of the issues you have and ask for money, you will have it. We take it even a step further that we've uh, built in recent times something called uh, uh, industry averages or IA. And what it is is that you can actually do comparisons to what other RMs are doing. We collect all the information, it's kept privately, but we, we can show the averages. So yeah, if you wanted to, if you wanted to take a particular section of road and look at the activity from this past year and the year before and the year before, we can tell you the number of times that you've visited there, the number of times that you dumped, the total 
uh, amount of the material that was dumped and sometimes it would vary. Maybe you, uh, again, it might be one type of rock and then a smaller one on top of it. You'll see it all. I'm satisfied with the answer there, Vince. I have a couple questions. There's, there's a gentleman on the chat line that wants to know what the monthly fee is. Okay, so the, and this is going to be based upon your, it's the four graders that are, are, are haulage trucks that we're doing, but basically, uh, what is it per unit per month? Uh, it's uh, $40 per unit per month, and that's uh, paid annually. Uh, so that's $480 a year per uh, unit. Can I ask a quick question, uh, Jeff? Is so if that's based on our municipal rate, is that the rate for everyone or is each system have a different um, system access monthly fee? Well, no, we, we, we have different access fees for uh, different products. For instance, the uh, uh, gra gravel or greater package, uh, that's at, at $30 a month. Uh, the, the, the technology is different in what we do with it. So, but as far as the $40 goes, yeah, it's, it's our going rate for anybody. And it didn't matter whether you bought one or 40 of them. The, the cost of the servers and cellular and everything's the same. Okay. Vince, I, I've got a question. Bill, do you have one? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Vince. Uh, yes. I have last one, year yeah. when we discussed, there was some concern a municipal owned device going on to a third party truck. Okay, like our, we don't own our trucks. The, the tender that we hand out, it's basically a total package. We, they're responsible for buying the gravel, crushing it, weighing it and distributing it. Uh, is, do you guys have any concern? And actually two councillors last year, maybe three or four brought up the concern to put these devices on a third party, is there any possible damage that can be done to, to that asset that we don't know, that you know of, have you had other experiences in damaging a third party asset with, with uh, these devices that are owned uh, by the municipality? If we didn't have the experience of this third party installer that we know that does a quality job, we might have some concern, but generally there is none. These guys, there's there's really a couple of components. One is that black box that you saw with the keypad and it comes with a pedestal mount and it is the choice of the, the, the actual owners of the vehicles. If they want this to be uh, dash mounted, under dash mounted, on dash mounted, it's their choice. So they will select the location of whatever they feel is most comfortable. So it, it is not some guy barging in. They can tell them, and that's the one part. The other part is that there's a tilt switch that gets mounted uh, towards for the tailgate to know when the gate is open or closed, and it's literally two sheet metal screws, and, and, and the rest of it is wiring. Um, as a matter of fact, if I may add something else, that what I would consider is that, the, uh, that when the installer is putting this in, they should put, and we provide about an 18 inch pigtail, we'll call it. They would take the wires and properly uh, mount them, but they have a quick connect. So uh, that way that if uh, the, for whatever the reason, no longer with a contract or, or they're buying a new piece of equipment, you can simply do a quick disconnect of that, uh, of the system and remove it. And the, uh, the pigtail is left underneath the dash, for instance, and uh, it doesn't impede the operation at all. Vince, I have one more question. Last year, the question was put forward to Jesse, I believe. On your, on your map of Saskatchewan and Manitoba, is there any of this equipment installed in third-party vehicles? Is it all fleet vehicles or have you got any of these GPS is installed in third party vehicles? Because uh, we, the okay, answer so last year was no. Uh, the answer this year is that uh, the closest we have is that there's uh, municipalities that don't do their own snow removal. 
and they use other companies, quite similar to what you're talking. So our systems are installed in uh, privately owned uh, graders, but no, we don't have this in the haulage. Um, your, your situation from our experience is not that common uh, uh, from, from the clients that we have, that they're using a third party uh, situation. The ones that purchase from us, it's for their own purposes. But operationally, it, it makes no difference. Hey, Vince, I've got a question. Thanks, uh, Bill, for um, bringing that up. So, and yeah, we are unique. We're blessed that we're right surrounded with gravel pits. So make having our own equipment in this case just wouldn't make sense because there's lots of competition here. And I feel contracting this uh, this situation out is better. Do you feel that there is any concern from your end? Yeah, I realize you're selling it, whether you're selling it to a third party or to us. Do you see that there's any concern whatsoever putting these devices on a third party asset? Sure, there's, a, uh, I, I, being honest from, and it has nothing to do with our the technical part of our services. But the first concern we have is that even if it's a, a third party or a municipality, the, uh, the concern is the installation. So this is a system that I would not recommend that this you know, the company that's doing the gravel should install it themselves because it's just uh, it just opens up possibilities of not good. So from I'm concerned that way. I am also have a concern that that if I own something, I'm going to take good care of it. If I don't own it and I don't like it, I might be rougher on it. So I'm being perfectly honest. This keypad's a keypad. It's all waterproof. You could pour coffee on it, but if it's your own people, you're going to monitor it better. And hopefully there is no problem. But if you want an honest answer, that was it. I'm worried that I'm not in control of my equipment. But if the third party, somebody else installs it and you guys on, uh, and we want, we'll monitor this all the time. If we see something unusual is happening, you will be informed by this and you forward that on to the people. Like for instance, that something uh, to do with the keypad or it doesn't look like the tailgate's closing. Yeah. We, we, have, we have systems that monitor this. So we'll tell you. So any concerns we have are eliminated through us having uh, uh, monitoring to it. And that is the benefit of using a third party installer is the installation in every, uh, I guess, contractor vehicle is standardized. Uh, you know that the install is the exact same. And um, um, yeah. The, the worst thing is you do not want Jesse nor Vince doing this because the thing will just burst into flames. We don't know. We don't know how to install any of this stuff. Well, a couple other questions, Vince. The, the $8,080, that's for four units? Yes. And monthly the monthly fee, $40 per month, which works out to $480 a year, you said, is yep. that per unit or is that for all four? That's per unit. Okay. So the, here's the way the rollout would be, is that uh, complete system through us, with service is $8,180 for, uh, for immediate, so to speak. And that provides you a year's worth of service. A year later, uh, help me out here, then, uh, then uh, you are going to pay $1,920 for year two. So this, the price drops substantially from $8,180 and a year later down to $1,920. Two years from now, I don't have a crystal ball, but it's probably going to be, it's going to be the same price of 1920. Three years from now, $1,920. So the big hit is up front for, to buy the devices. Yeah, right? 8180. The part part of this is that anybody that's going to have this. Exactly. Really that's four. 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 So we need eight. So, uh, yeah, we have two, we have we usually break it into two contracts. So that would mean that we would have potentially eight trucks. So if contractor A gravels at a different time than contractor B, the keypad potentially could be used, but then 
you would need to have the wiring set up in contractor B's trucks. Plus multiple trailers. Yeah, and, and, and actually, and that's a good point that what you're saying, but that's also the reason why I suggested that they use, when the an installer does this, they use quick connectors on this. These are uh, round connectors that go together, they're waterproof. So they would do that on your existing uh, provider, let's say for now. And then the, the removal of this, of the complete system is probably 10 minute a removal. And then to transfer it to the other company you're talking, they would mount it the same way, but they, they would have to run uh, a cable that would might take an hour, mm -hmm. 45 minutes to an hour for them to install it. But it is not a big operation, if that's your concern. So there's no calibration needed transferring it from one uh, uh, truck or, or trailer to the next one. Just unplug, plug, and done. Uh, correct. It, uh, I wouldn't call it calibration, but when the guy installs the tilt switch towards the back to make sure that the tailgate's on or off, all that happens is the installer talks to us in the office and they'll perform some tests to make sure that the boxes, the tilt box is installed in the right angle. So it's not overly sensitive or, or it's accurate enough, but there's no calibration with it with this. And you said it was roughly a thousand dollars per installation. Oh no, 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 no. We're talking 200 dollars $200 per installation. Okay. For I the said two hundred times. Yeah, I'm just saying it's about two hundred dollars times four is about eight hundred, and I said sub one thousand dollars. So I was I'm I'm guesstimating. No, it's it's only two hundred dollars for for the uh, per okay. install. And okay. if, if it is like you said, that if you're transferring it to a different vehicle, it might be even slightly less because uh, the second install, so to speak, will be a little bit quicker. But it, again, it's, it's a, a very small investment uh, for the install. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we've got someone with their hand up, Etel. I'll, I'll ask you to, oh, there you go. Thanks, Donna. Yeah, it's Evan Keller here. I was just curious, is this similar to like a, hooking up a GPS in, in a truck? Well, the, actually, fractionally it is. The devices that we use, have uh, they have a GPS uh, unit in them, just like it would be the type, you know, the ones you seem to be aware of, like OBD2s that plug into a, a car or a truck or yeah. a wired version. It, it has that built into it. That's how it it does two things. It, it, it's a GPS to know where the device is, but it also has a cellular module that forwards the data on from the vehicle to the servers. And that's what you see. So in basic terms, yes, it, it is there. Would, um, would this system interfere with our existing GPS? Because all of our trucks have GPS already. No, as a matter uh, no, because for instance, we work with a, a large construction company here called Allen Construction, and they had a contract for a few years with another company that they insisted if you're going to come into our onto our yard or our property you need to use have our gps unit so we actually provided two systems to them and they don't interfere at all that's like it's no different than having um two cell phones uh two guys talking in a uh, in a car with two cell phones it doesn't interfere at all okay and can you say who the installer is locally or uh, do you want to know who the installer is? Yeah. 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 It's uh, so we work with extreme electronics. Okay. That's what I thought. We have worked with a lot of bad installers in our years, bad ones that it's been horrible. And so we've been fortunate to build a, a stable of, uh, of good guys and they know exactly what they're doing. Do, do you know them? Yeah, no, they do good work. I yeah, no, I was just curious. We're doing all of our own installs on our existing GPS units, and it's not that difficult, and it doesn't seem to interfere with anything. So I was just curious if it was similar or not. So okay, and you know what? I'm officially to say we've developed it so that the majority, I'll say, the majority of any of the systems, greater or more or whatever, the the actual shops themselves at the RM offices, we made it simple enough for them to do. But I think in this situation for the small amount of money, 
it's up to you. You could try and install it. And if it works, great. And if not, you might have to call them in. But if you feel that you're comfortable doing it and you know, you're know you hyped to do it, we'll work with you. Right. And my last question, I guess, is that if I had these units on my own and the RM wanted to have their units, I could just take mine out and swap theirs in, no issues? Well, no, I don't know what you mean. These, these are, oh. uh, the our device is yeah. built into that black box with the keypad that you saw in that first picture. Right. Let me let me uh, clarify when you say your units. And... Let's just say I bought, like, let's just say I signed up and put these in all my trucks for my own personal use or yes. business use and then yes, got the contract. Could I swap the RM's units in to satisfy their conditions? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't do that. Why are you doing that? Thanks for spending. <laughs> you know, we love money, but what are you talking about? You, oh, so you're saying, I'm sorry, I'm assuming who you are. You're not a counselor, are you? No, I'm a contractor. <laughs> but we, we already, we run like two to three different systems to track gravel uses already. This one okay. sounds a lot simpler. So yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's, this is an issue that we definitely have. Yeah. Uh, well, like okay. Make and sure everything's accurate. See, in your circumstance, we, uh, we salute you because the whole idea is that are you having the system, even if it wasn't related to this particular conversation, it will help you. What you're going to get is a lot of stuff. You're going to get the GPS. You're going to see the idle. You're going to see the routes. You're going to see why are they sitting in the pits so long. This yeah, is so not what... This so municipality we, doesn't care about that part of it, but you we already do. Have, like we already run GPS, and that's why I'm asking. Is that we run GPS and then we run a bunch of other systems, and we have to reconcile them every month, and it's it's a lot of work. Whereas this sounds like it would do it all at once for us. So that's interesting. It it, it would, and additionally, that if you had a billing system, you could take our statistical information and export it in an Excel spreadsheet or CSV and import it into something else. So you don't have any manual transfers. This RM that you're with right now, they, they don't care. They just wanna make sure everything's you know accurate. And But you care, you care about your productivity. So it's different. The other thing that uh, this RM cares, doesn't care about is the cost per kilometer perhaps uh, and, and from billing and that sort of thing. We provide that. So it's an added level that's there but they don't need that, but you might, if that makes sense. So Vince, yes. um, Evan, are you done with your question? Yeah, I'm done, thanks. Just on Thank the same you. line, what Evan is asking, and basically what Bill was asking before, Vince, <clears throat> it's, it's no use having 35 different uh, devices here when we can work together as a and partnering, whoever, let's say the contractor who would be the, whatever we put in our tender, and let's say we do put the contractor buys the boxes, can we be in control of the data, even though the boxes are in their system? Exactly what Evan was saying is, let the contractor buy that portion, but we want on our server or on our database, be in control of the data. Is that even possible? Well, yeah. And, and Jesse and I talked about this more than once. We talked about it this morning. Here's the deal. You guys, your particular RM is buying the equipment and paying for the service. You have this. In actuality, you should be the only ones that have normally access to this. The third-party company, if, let's say at present or otherwise, they have no need to see this. The way I understand it is that they provide reports to you, and this is a way for you to do a good comparator to see. But uh, we do know that, for instance, on a greater standpoint, and I know it's a different product, but you could do things. You could recover this. You could say, hey, put your bids in, and here's what's going to happen. We're going to provide you the equipment that we already own at no charge, but you guys should pay for the airtime service associated to it because you're going to have the ability to also see the data as they would, like your other gentleman here that talked about GPS, he should be able to use it for his productivity to oversee his operation and his people. But you still have access to it as the RM to be able to see all the dumps and the rest of it. So you can share, you can use different uh, login IDs, which we insist upon. Nobody can share IDs. 
and, uh, and, and, you know, you could do a cost sharing possibly it it's up to you. Okay. Vince, my next question is it doesn't pertain to Evan's business because that's privately owned, but in a municipality, we've got 4,800 shareholders. If the municipal, a municipality has that, can any taxpayer ask for that application on his phone or on his computer and track that data? Because there should be nothing hidden there. Can that be transparent to any ratepayer out there? Transparency. Well, here's the thing. Uh, then what I'd suggest is that you don't give them, uh, you, you shouldn't give the public access, even as a matter of fact, without a CAO's approval from an existing client that they say they want to add somebody to have access, we need things in writing. We're very cautious of the security. What I would suggest is that instead, you could generate uh, the reports and you could make those, those reports public. You would do PDFs or screenshots, add them into your, into your website for yours or put it into the Facebook. You could have it so that if somebody wants to see the travels of what's going on, and the data, copy it and put it on for the public display. If I may give you one slightly unusual example, we developed something called a snow map and it's related for uh, graders. And what we did was that we've got it so that uh, the RMs that have graders can actually give the public on through their, uh, through their website, they can see a, uh, it updates every four hours. You can see all the snow being removed for the past four hours and up to 72 hours because the public needs to know are the roads safe do they you know is it safe to go to work are the school buses able to go um you know is it is there a street hazard at all so and they all the rms get phone calls from everybody this eliminated it so this and you just, and you just answered my question i didn't mean for a rate pair down the road here being able to go right into our server that's exactly the answer i was looking for is oh, okay. it's two, three, four, five hours later. And I was basically thinking about a call I got last week about snow clearing, but I want to basically tie it to the, um, to the gravel. Is that information accessible to the general public? You just answered it, my question. And it's, yeah, yes. it's available to you. You just have to make it public uh, through your that whatever. Council just, council just has to make that decision. If it's public information, make it available. So nobody phones in is basically the, is my road sprayed? Is my road gravel? Is my road clean? Make it available so the less phone calls to the office. Thanks Vince. Okay, well, yeah, it gets rid of all of that. Vince, I think that you talked about the map for the snow clearing, but you're not, you I think said that the mapping for the gravel is not something that you can share. Well, we've, we developed our software so that it was accessible. The, it, there's no security concerns of the public seeing uh, where what snow removal has been happening. Some RMs don't want it because they go, I don't want that because it opens up the scrutiny for people. So honestly, there's RMs that say, no, we're not going to publish that. You guys are, are a breath of fresh air because you want to be transparent. We're saying that they can't log in to do this with the gravel, but you can create the reports and add them so they can be seen in the public through you yeah, guys. That's all. It, yeah, that's kind of what Don, what, what I asked, what Don was saying. Once, let's say at the end of the month, run a report, make the chart, this road got so much gravel, and just make it transparent. We shouldn't have to beg for that information if a taxpayer wants to see how many years in a row now this road got how much this got, yeah, that's if, reporting. If I, make, if I can make a suggestion that you could do this media thing in several ways, like I said, put it on your website, put it in your Facebook. The other option is you publish the, your, your, your monthly meetings and the minutes of the meeting. If you want to, maybe that's a place to add the two screenshots that you have into there. You could do the screenshot of what roads were done and show st the statistical stuff in there. I don't mean to make more work for you, but I'm just saying it's a it's a different way. If they want it, look at the minutes. If they want it, look at the website. If they want it, look at Facebook. It's up to you. Um, Alex, I think had a question there. Yeah, you guys can hear me now? Yeah. 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 Cool. 
Hi, Alex. Sorry, sorry about that. I was uh, on my computer, so I jumped off and got on my cell phone. Uh, Alex from Russell Ready Mix. Uh, I may, I just missed the first few minutes, but uh, just trying to understand the system. We use a few different systems around here as well. But uh, from my understanding, you're saying that the truck basically enters the amount of material it's hauling? Correct. The, uh, uh, yeah, so the, the keypad, they enter two things. They'd enter in, uh, let's say, a two-digit code for the type of material, and then they would enter the quantity of it. it it's, it's the method that uh, that, that we're presenting today. See, I guess that's where I'm having a little trouble with it because uh, I, I have the same issues uh, with Hall on that. But if I have the trucker entering the quantity, then basically I'm relying on him to enter the correct quantity. Yes, that's correct. Um, there, there's no doubt. Now, um, uh, that, but right now, if you look at every, uh, the other typical the scenario that's happening today, Right now, they are getting a driver with a pencil and a piece of paper to write that down as well. And, uh, but it's based upon, you compare, the, if, if he puts 25 yards in there, from my understanding, you guys said that, that they have to weigh it. And you need the, uh, so the guy has to weigh it. We're just doing a comparison to, to make sure the numbers are correct. If you have a guy that's gonna put incorrect numbers in, then that's a concern, but you can see the numbers he entered in relation to the way scale. So this would have to be coupled, like that's I guess where I'm getting at, that this would have to be uh, coupled with a way scale. Otherwise, there's no way of really providing the quantity that got uh, hauled. Well, I will say this, that we, we are doing something, uh, we're developing, I won't be ready for about five months. But for instance, that uh, this is not our wheelhouse, but uh, a lot of the newer vehicles uh, that have uh, their, the, the computers in them, that if they have, if the data is inside for the weight of the axles, we're planning on having that weight forwarded through to us and we can calculate it out. So it's automatic. There's no longer the keypad will become mute or moot. It won't, it won't work. There's no need to it. So what will happen is that that before the load is put on, we know what the vehicle weighs. When the, may it be cement or gravel is installed, we see what that weight is and we'll know how many yards it is. And then as the dump happens, we're able to see the weight. But we, we're, we're hoping to do it in one of two ways. Either A, it's a newer vehicle and it has that computerized information built into it. Or B, we can have uh, either pressure airbag sensors that are put on. And I'm sure I'm getting all technical right now. I don't mean to, but you could put a sensor on the uh, airbags if it's, if it's that sort of thing, and we can get the weights from that. Or some of them use a spring, which gets mounted to the frame, more work, there's an additional cost. But we are moving towards that. Yeah, I just, uh, with some of that stuff there, like obviously I, uh... We, we deal with bucket scales, load cells, uh, conveyor scales and all that, that, that uh, creates quite a bit of calibration and, you know, we don't find them as accurate there. I, I guess, uh, yeah, that's, okay, those, are just, those are just my concerns with the, with the method, how this, um, but, but I, need, I, 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 I totally get your hauler out idea and the, and the dumping of the material, like that it uh, sends a ping or whatever when you dump the material in a certain area. I just don't know how you get any quantity verification on this without uh, scaling or having, you know, a pile. Well, it's funny. You kind of went both ways on this. We're telling you that we're moving towards doing it by weight. But at this point, our job is to, is, uh, is to be able to take the data that's provided. Yes, you have an individual that can manually put something in and there is a level of concern if this guy's going to enter the right amount. But that same individual that enters 25 yards in and we calculate the weights calculated is the same guy that has to get the confirmation at the scale before he leaves. So all we're doing is you could just do random samplings to make sure this guy, what the true weight is before he leaves and the number he put in is accurate. If he's constantly putting some different number in, somebody has to have a talk with that person. So this would be like we would we would couple this system with a scale, basically, is how it would have to work to, to get that 
quantity verification. Well, today, right no, now, we're, talk, we're talking right about now, we're talking about this future. application, this particular municipality, and we're trying to integrate something with the method that's being used. Somebody loads up, they weigh, there's a documentation. The driver spends five seconds to enter the keypad in, and it's entered. Somebody could be doing a forensic every once in a while to make sure those two numbers match, or somebody should get fired. Oh, for sure. Well, like, I guess where I'm coming from is just like, I, uh, I have a bunch of private trucks and company trucks hauling for me and all that. And, you know, something like a system like this, it uh, could, you know, provide me some sureties or whatever, because a lot of the time I have to either man a scale or rely on their loads, right? So um, that's now, where we're, I guess we're just, coming from. All we're doing is we're providing data that is, uh, that can be confirmed uh, from that weigh scale. And, and we're talking about that application. And uh, I don't know what else to say. We, 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 we don't just put like a spot. If a guy, for instance, and again, I'm a city boy. If the guy is dumping this in a pile, you'll see on the map, you'll see a red line, the guy traveling, and then a blue dot, so to speak, if he's dropping. If he's traveling while he's dumping, you'll see a blue line. And we give you the statistics of the distance that he traveled while dumping those the, that yardage. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so no. That sounds that uh, kind of answers my, I guess, question there. It's uh, we're looking. I'm looking at it at, at, uh, for a different application than I guess what you're uh, providing here today. So well, I don't I don't mean to be soliciting more business, but we would be honored to get feedback from you of your applications because we're pretty smart. But our smartness comes from guys like you, municipalities that need things. We will add features and make things better. So contact us. Here's our phone number right on the screen. Oh. And it will be on YouTube. Thank you. That, I think, answered my, my question. I hope so. Thanks. Is there any other questions? I think it looks like we're good on this end. Well, then I think I've we got one, I've got one minor question there. If the not, sensor, let's say if the sensor would fail on one of the trucks, do, is there a, a way that you can send the alerts out or something that that truck has has some issues and uh, basically yeah. pull them away and get it fixed? Yeah, our, our geeks in our, our back room built something I, I barely understand. It's called a cron job. What it, we get reports every single morning of all the unusual things for graders and all the unusual things for mowers and for fleet vehicles and something else. I don't look at it, the other guys do. So this would be included because if, for instance, that that that, that gate sensor, that if it doesn't work, we'll, we're able to see all the events. So what'll happen is our software looks through and says, well, that's weird. We saw that it dumped, but we didn't see it close or it didn't do something we will get a notification and that gets forwarded to you. And, and by the way, we don't communicate with the, uh, the haulage company. You're our customer. So the, uh, the, you're, you're, you're responsible. We'll tell you when something's not right and you can forward that email on to them, if you know what I mean. We don't ever communicate with uh, anybody but the customer. So that would work in the same effect uh, if that gate didn't open and they didn't dump their load and they went back to the pit, it will show all that, correct? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And then that's when we would get the notification? Yep, okay. yeah, because, because there's a certain sequence of everything that happens, right? Starting from the pit and to the time to go to the, where they're dumping and when it goes back to the pit, there's a cadence, there's an order of things. If something isn't right, it's either A, somebody's pulling some funnies or B, it's there's something wrong in the equipment, and uh, and you'd be notified to check both out. I would like to give the opportunity for the rest of the people that are listening and on the uh, the, the page here for for this interview. If if there's any more questions from them. I see we've got a few on there. I'm not sure exactly how many, but.
I see none, Vince, at this particular time. So I think you've answered all of the questions from this end anyway. Well, that makes me feel good. Or they fell asleep. One or the other. Well, I would hope not, but nobody's snoring here. I would hope not, but uh, yeah, that's a possibility. Um, I would. I appreciate you uh, taking the time and uh, giving us the information again this year. And you know, it looks like a lot of stuff hasn't changed, but uh, you've got somebody in place here now uh, that's close by for an installation of it, which uh, makes a bit of a difference, I suppose. But uh, again, I want to thank you on, on our behalf. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. All of you have a good day, whatever's left of it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks.